It's safe to say that one of the most sought-after relics in history is the Ark of the Covenant, something even more amazing when we consider there is no solid proof it even exists. There are many, though, that believe the Ark is real and that it resides hidden away somewhere on the planet today. Many of us have enjoyed the movie Raiders of the Lost Ark, in which German archaeologists, under the guidance and orders of the Third Reich, went searching for the ancient relic. In reality, not only did German archaeologists spend considerable time and effort in an attempt to locate the Ark of the Covenant in the years leading up to the Second World War, but the notion, as explored in the movie, that the Ark was a telephone to God could have more truth in it than many might suspect. Indeed, the Ark of the Covenant might have been much more than just an ancient relic. There is reason to believe it was an advanced technological device and a dangerous one at that. In fact, some of the most descriptive writings of the Ark of the Covenant, including instructions on how to build it, can be found in the Bible. After returning from Mount Sinai, carrying with him two stone tablets that contained the Ten Commandments, Moses also carried specific instructions on how to construct a container that would house the stone tablets. This container would be the Ark of the Covenant. Incidentally, these instructions can be found in the Bible, and when modern scientists have attempted to build them, they have discovered that they are genuine instructions to what appeared to be some kind of electrical capacitor. And what's more, these recreation attempts were shut down before completion due to the volatile nature of the construct. According to the instructions, the Ark was made of wood before every inch, both inside and outside of the box, was covered with gold plates. The lid of the Ark, also made from wood and plated in gold, had gold cherubs on each end. One cherub, the positive one, would connect to the outer plating, while the other, the negative one, would connect to the inner plating with another layer of wood attached to it to act as an insulator. The wood of the box itself also acted as an insulator between the positive charge of the outer plating and the negative charge of the inner plating. It certainly appears to have been dangerous, so much so that only certain people could approach it, and even then, only when wearing a specially made gown and breastplates decorated with specific stones and jewels. These jewels were said to resonate in sympathy with the Ark. From a modern perspective, these breastplates might have been protective clothing from some kind of radiation. Descriptions of these plates and gowns state that they covered the head, lungs, and even the genitals, all of which would mirror similarly designed protective clothing today. We might recall the biblical story of Aaron, the brother of Moses, Aaron's two sons approached the Ark without permission and without the special breastplates. When they did so, the ancient writings state that a bolt of lightning shot out of the Ark and entered the boy's nostrils. This lightning would kill them instantly, burning them from the inside. This description fits well with an electrically charged device and how it might act if handled or approached incorrectly. Some writings state that when active, an apparent image of God would appear in between the two gold cherubs. If we recall the line from the Indiana Jones film of the Ark of the Covenant being a telephone straight to God, this apparent electrical reaction might explain what was perceived. Or should we take such ideas at face value? Perhaps what was witnessed here was some kind of electrically generated hologram that offered two-way communication. Whoever the entity was, the larger population would very much believe it to be God. Some people believe, as well as being a communication device, the Ark of the Covenant may also have been some kind of advanced weapon, and point to the story of the walls of Jericho as proof of this. According to the legend, the Israelites had been instructed to march around the city of Jericho for seven days, carrying the Ark with them. 
After this time, there was a blast of horns and the walls of the city crumbled and collapsed. Perhaps we should also recall the legend of the parting of the waters. Might this device have been used to literally do just that? If the Ark of the Covenant was a technological device, where might it have come from? Who might God have been? Perhaps we should return our attention to when the Ark came into being, when, according to the Bible, Moses ventured to the top of Mount Sinai in order to meet God. According to some theories, the God he was actually meeting was likely to be an extraterrestrial, and he likely boarded a spacecraft at the top of the mountain. While this might sound outlandish to some, there are some intriguing details to examine. For example, Moses appeared to have aged significantly when he returned from the mountain and had a strange glow to him. If he had spent time in an advanced spaceship, he might very well have aged greatly, while those on Earth didn't. It's also known that many modern UFO sightings occur over mountains around the world. After all, such high peaks would make ideal locations for discrete landings. Might it be that along with the stone tablets given to Moses during this time, he was also given the instructions and know-how to build the Ark of the Covenant? Essentially, an advanced alien device. Whatever the origins of it, if the Ark of the Covenant did exist, might it have survived into the modern world and where might it be today? Might it reside somewhere hidden away for hundreds, perhaps thousands of years, awaiting discovery. There are, as we might imagine, many theories as to where the Ark might reside in the 21st century. Some believe it was taken into the mountainous regions of Japan by an unknown tribe of Israelites. What is perhaps interesting about this claim is the tradition of Shinto warriors who make an annual journey to the top of Mount Suriji, carrying a box called an omikoshi, which is said to carry the spirit of God. Might this tradition be recreating the alleged journey of this speculative ancient Israelite tribe? There are also those who believe the Ark is hidden under the Dome of the Rock at Temple Mount in Jerusalem. And interestingly, there is an account of its near discovery. In 1981, for example, Rabbi Getz made secret tunnels under the Western Wall, eventually arriving under Temple Mount. His efforts eventually alerted the authorities and his illegal excavation was shut down. He would claim, though, that he had been only 40 feet away from the famous Ark of the Covenant. Others believed the Ark was discovered in the 12th century by the Knights Templar and then taken to France. The previously mentioned Third Reich certainly appeared to think so and conducted numerous searches of French regions that had legends associated with the Ark. Ultimately, they were unsuccessful in these searches, but some believe that this is because the Ark left France hundreds of years previously and ultimately arrived in Rosslyn Chapel in Scotland, where many believe it remains to this day. There is, though, one location that is perhaps more intriguing than others, and one where researcher and author Graham Hancock made a compelling argument for, in his book, The Sign and the Seal, at the end of an investigation that he would claim led him out of mainstream journalism. According to Hancock's extensive research, the Ark of the Covenant resides in the town of Aksum in Ethiopia, specifically a small church known as the Cathedral of St. Mary of Zion. Hancock even spoke to some of the priests whose duty it was to guard the ancient relic in this small, unassuming building. Hancock had arrived at a similar conclusion before this apparent confirmation. He would offer that, his own conclusions aside, he quite simply believed the conviction in the priests' eyes as they spoke to them. Even more alarming, these priests often became quite ill within months, sometimes weeks, of taking up the mission to guard this apparent ancient relic. What's more, they would almost always die from this illness, which would have remarkably similar symptoms to radiation poisoning. Might Graham Hancock be correct? And the Ark of the Covenant resides in an unassuming location in Ethiopia. 
Or might it reside in an equally unassuming chapel in Scotland, or even under Temple Mount in Jerusalem? Perhaps one last thing to consider is that some scholars and translators of ancient texts suggest there could be a second ark, if not several more. One thing is certain, if the Ark of the Covenant is ever found and revealed to the world, it will be the most historic discovery of all time.